Okay, so the last me method we want to look at here is um, uh, using weighted values to uh, create certainty and, and generate that, that smooth gradient as well. So, um, you know, uh, let's take a closer look at this slider in order for me to kind of describe what I'm talking about here. So as this, as this slider moves into the, uh, the triggered zone, right, what we want to what we want to essentially do is say, hey, we're more certain that it's closer. We're more certain that it's closer. We're more certain that it's closer. We're more. We are certain, and then we're getting less certain, less certain, less certain, right? So, uh, you know, all the way out here, we should be, you know, we are we are very certain that it's not within the bounds. As we get closer, though, that noisy data um, starts to starts to kind of play around with you know, how certain we are that we're actually there. Is, is this just a really fast user movement or is this, you know, a noise that we're trying to sort out? So that's that's what this weighted uh, algorithm is gonna give us, is this ability to determine, all right, we're pretty close. Like this stuff should start counting at some point, right? Uh, and, you know, we're pretty far away. This should, we should definitely not, not be triggering anything. Uh, and you know another thing that this weighted algorithm does is gives you you know some more some more stuff to play around with and and maybe it gives you some some richer interactions as well. But let's let's start by just creating um, some weights on on this slider and how we can start thinking about that. And you know I generally think about weights as a gradient. You want it to be kind of a smooth um, a smooth you know ascent into like positive weights and then negative weights. So, so uh, um, you know, an easy way to do that in, in Touch Designer is to get out of the world of chops where you might have to be tweaking around a lot of stuff in order to do that and start to start to play around with some of the tops a bit better. Um, and, you know, ramp is a great method of creating these gradients um, that, that you have an excellent sense of control over with this UI, but then you also have these um, this, these keys that you can create very precise locations for things, um, you know, using utilizing these keys, or it might take you a little bit with you know the animation ta or the animation uh, comp or or you know some other comparable uh, method in, in chop worlds, right? We can just we can just make these gradients with with ramps fairly easily. And um, in order to get this into the chop world, we have uh, this handy uh, chop called top two, right? And we can just lay this ramp into this top two and then get rid of the G, B, and A because we're not really gonna be using them and just use one channel of the R, right? Um, so what we might wanna do here is just kind of play around with these keys and and put you know the highest. We can start thinking about this graph as our weights, right? So at the very edges of the slider, we would have zero as a weight. At the very center, we would have one as a weight, and then at the very edge of the slider, we would have uh, zero as a weight again. And this might be this might be useful for you if you're doing some kind of like sonar experience, right? Where you know uh, there's a distance sensor that's like you know the volume of the sonar blip is getting louder and louder and louder as you're getting closer and closer and closer. So you might use this for that, 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 you know, type of interaction where, you know, uh, this, this is essentially the volume that you're going for, but ours, our interaction that we're trying to sculpt here is whether or not, um, you know, this slider is within this triggerable zone or outside of this triggerable zone. So we have to do a different kind of weight distribution here. Um, and really what we, what we should focus on first are these edges, right? We want these edges to be very crisp in terms of the weight. So in order to do that, I'm going to open up this, uh, this docked uh, uh, table down here called Ramp Keys 1, and I'm going to make it viewer active and add in another, um, uh, another component by right-clicking on the numbers and, and saying Add Below. And we're going to make this position one, and uh, it's going to be zero 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 one, and that's going to give us, um, you know, the the end end point of our thing won't be a repeated thing, uh, won't be a repeated um, 
value from one, but it'll be its own its own value that we can control. And then we want to we want to make these edges now. So uh, if we if we add one above and one below the 0.5 and use our edges that we had from before, which were 0.45, and we'll make those, uh, you know, let's say we'll weight those, maybe, uh, you know, put those at 0 0.5001 0, 0, and then uh, 0.55 at 0, 0.5001, 0, 0, right? And uh, what that gives us is, is this, hard edge here that you know everything leading up to this 0.5 is like this nice even slope and then we have this really hard edge to, to this this point and then down to the edge again so everything in the very exact center of this thing is going to have the highest weight imaginable um, and will give us the the you know the most certain response so uh, that's that's uh, you know one way to do it however you know, the noise that we're getting here kind of fits within this box just enough. So what I might do is add one more uh, set of keys here, one above and one below, and I'll put one at 0.47 um, and at, make that a, a weighted to be one as well. And then I'll put one at 0.5, what would that be? 0.52, right? And make that one weighted as well. So now we have this, uh, plateau of um, you know one weighted uh, uh, values, and then this sharp decline on the edge to uh, zero uh, or to our 0.5 weighted values, and then everything uh, below 0.5 we would want to be considered off, right? So what we might do here um, is uh, you know now use one of the methods below to get like a, sm a smooth um, a smoothed output. So we'll take the lag and we'll bring the lag up here as you know our sensor input. And then we'll use a lookup uh, a lookup chop and then use the top two as the lookup uh, table and the lag as our index. And now we have a series of weights as we get closer and closer and then as we get farther and farther, that give us like how certain this thing is that it's not in the center. And you can already kind of see, you know, we, we're giving this certainty kind of a wrong weight here. We're, we're saying that like, even when it's all the way off over, over here, you, you know, we're still giving it enough of, a, enough of a certainty to maybe even trigger something. So we don't want that. We want, we want these weights to be a little bit more uh, crisp here. And one, one way that we might do that is uh, by adding in a math chop after our top two and then rearranging these things so that uh, we go from uh, the from range is zero to one and the two range is negative one to one. And now when we're off of the, the, the center here, everything is, is in a negative weight. And as we get closer, those negative weights start to become closer to this zeroed weight, which is kind of uncertain. And then once we get on, we get these positive weights of like, oh, hey, we're, we are weighted in the middle. We're, we're probably in the center there. Um, so, you know, that, that's helpful to us of like, you know, all the way out here, we're getting definitely negative weights. We are definitely not on it here. But as we start to get closer, we, we become, uh, you know, on that edge especially, it's like, oh, maybe we are on it, right? So uh, we can make this, this distinction even a bit more drastic by adding in um, you know, one, one more. So like this ramp is, is pretty, it's not that steep, uh, even though we know at probably like 0.3 that we're off of this thing. So we can add uh, two more. We'll add one above the 0.45 uh, and one below the 0.55. And we'll call this one, uh, we'll say that at 0.4, we are definitely not on it anymore. And then the same with the, the uh, down here at 0.6, we are definitely not on it anymore, right? So now we have this gradient that, um, you know, as we get closer and closer and closer, we do this very sudden, sudden, sudden flip to positive ranges, right? 
So we can we can combine this with our uh, the accumulator that we had because this is essentially a certainty uh, metric right here that we've created. We're certain that we're on it now. We're uncertain. We're certain that we're off it now, right? We know between the two, you know, this is a certainty metric of how close we are to the actual trigger. So we can accumulate that with a speed and a logic. Right? So as we get closer, we accumulate, and this I think this logic is still set to 0.75. So what I might do is bring that down to 0.5 just so we, we get a, a quicker reading on it. Um, but as, as, we, as we move on to this thing or off of this thing, right, you can see that we're flipping, oh, hey, we're on it, oh, hey, we're off it, right? And, you know, as you sit on that edge, you might gain certainty that you're on or off. Or as you sit on that edge, you might lose certainty that you're on or off, right? And it all, it all comes down to these weights, which is essentially just, you know, a bit more of a, of a knob to tweak, right? So we can see... If we rename this thing now, uh, weighted accumulator, and then add it into our uh, our error measurer, uh, we can see how well it does compared to the rest of our methods. So as we're on it. You know, it, it, it has just about as much error as the, the moving average accumulator and the lagged accumulator. As we sit on an edge, as we sit on an edge, this thing didn't move. As we, you know, kind of play around with this edge case, we can, we can see whether or not, you know, uh, this, this weighted accumulator is working for us. And this does have a slower response time because it's dealing with these weights. And, and you can play around with these weights to find an ideal uh, you know, place for them. Uh, but what I will show you is it, it is more certain whether it's on an edge or not, right? This lagged accumulator and this moving um, average accumulator still show uh, a little bit of error while they just sit on this edge. While the weighted accumulator um, has has a bit more certainty behind it because of these weights. Um, and there's there's other things you can do with these, right? So like, you know, if you have some kind of complex interaction that you're trying to do here, you can switch between the two, the all of these, right? So if you have some kind of interaction where it matters that somebody's on this thing and you know that they're at an edge bound, right? You might use the weighted accumulator to like, you know, process whether or not they're sitting on that edge. But once you have triggered it, you might go to one of these faster methods to release from that um, that triggered state, right? So you can combine these things or even like start averaging these, uh, these smoothing methods together to find uh, maybe even a, a more certain uh, method. So like if two of them have triggered and one of them hasn't, haven't triggered, say that it's on, right? Or if two of them have turned off and one of them hasn't turned off, say that it's off. You know, you can start to combine all of these into, into some uh, methods to get really rich uh, interaction data. Anyway, I think that's it for this video. Um, you know, please join again for some, some more tutorials into the world of Touch Designer. This was a fun deep dive into some... Uh, smoothing algorithms and, and weighted stuff. If you guys want to see more of this, leave a comment uh, or message me. Uh, but anyway, until next time.